moving on to um, the sustainable uh, issue. And, and uh, what we know is in terms of sustainability, some diets are preferable to others. When we look at the environmental impacts of animal agriculture, about 14 to 18% of all greenhouse gases, more than all forms of transportation combined, um, are due to animal agriculture. Uh, it, animal agriculture is the leading cause of rainforest destruction, species extinction, ocean dead zones, and water pollution. It's responsible for 91% of the destruction of the Amazon. And animal agriculture occupies 40% of the Earth's habitable, habitable land mass. If we look at the habitable land used for food production, both animal and plant, we're using at present about 50% of the Earth's habitable land and about 40% uh, of 80% um, of that is for animal agriculture. If everybody ate the way they do in the UK, that would be 95% of the land required to produce food for everyone on the planet. If everyone ate the US diet, it would be 138%. We would need about 1.4 planet Earths to sustain the population. If everybody ate a vegan diet, it would be 12%. Uh, an article from the Proceedings of National Academy of Sciences in 2016 stated that by 2050, greenhouse gas emissions would be reduced by 29% if we all followed the global dietary guidelines to eat more fruits and vegetables, less meat, sugar, and calories, and 70% if we all ate a vegan diet. Their recommendation, a global shift towards a plant-based diet. If we look at the amount of land required to feed an omnivore, we would need about two football fields for one person per year. For people eating plant-based, two football fields would feed about 14 people. You know, we are wasting valuable food. After cows arrive at a feedlot, they consume 12 pounds of food to gain enough weight to produce just one pound of beef. 50% of the world's grains go towards feeding livestock. Well, close to a billion people go hungry every day. If we look at the carbon footprint of our food, what we see becomes a sort of self-evident. Uh, if you look at the carbon footprint of, of uh, grazing beef, uh, it's about 60, they produce about 60 kilograms of carbon dioxide equivalents per kilogram of food. Uh, for lamb, it's 24. For cheese, 21. Coffee, 17. Prawns, 12. Pork, 7. Poultry, uh, 6. Eggs, 4.5. And then we go down into the plant foods. You're looking at between about 0.3 for nuts, 0.4 for root vegetables, 0.4 for, for a lot of fruits, 0.9 for beans and lentils, 1 for corn, 1.4 for grains. Uh, four for rice. You can see if, if we're eating on the lower end of the, of, of the spectrum and we're eating plant foods, our carbon footprint is dramatically reduced. And simple changes can make a big impact. Even if the world just ate 15% less meat, it would be like taking 240 million cars off the road each year. The Eat Lancet Commission uh, from 2019 asked this important question. Can we feed a future population of 10 billion people within the healthy planetary, uh, within healthy planetary uh, boundaries? And the answer is absolutely. Food is the single strongest lever to optimize human health and environmental sustainability on Earth. A diet rich in plant-based foods and which fewer animal food, with fewer animal foods confers both improved health and environmental uh, benefits. I love this quote by Jonathan uh, Safran Foer. He said, changing how we eat will not be enough on its own to save the planet, but we cannot save the planet without changing how we eat. And that brings us to the third piece of the why plant-based, which is plant-based is more humane. Animal-centered diets hurt animals. And in my opinion, it makes absolutely no sense to cause pain, suffering, and death of other living beings if it's unnecessary. There was a uh, poll 
by the American Society for Prevention of Cruelty to Animals. And in this poll, 94% of Americans agreed that animals should not suffer. But the reality is very different. 10 billion land animals are slaughtered for food every year in America. An estimated 99% are raised in factory farms or CAFOs, confined animal feeding operations. Dr. Albert Schweitzer, the uh, 1952 winner of the Nobel Prize said, the time is coming when people will be amazed that the human race existed so long before it recognized that thoughtless injury to life is incompatible with real ethics. Ethics in its unqualified form is extended responsibility to everything that has life. I think Dr. Schweitzer would be very disappointed uh, to see where we're at in 2021. And uh, there was an opinion piece in the New York Times uh, called The End of Meat is Here, One Can Only Hope. And in this uh, article, again, by jo Jonathan Safran Foer, uh, he states, our hand has been reaching for the doorknob for the last few years. COVID-19 has kicked the door open. On the other side is not something new, but something that calls from the past, a world in which farmers were not myths, tortured bodies were not food, and the planet was not the bill at the end of the meal. One meal in front of the other, it's time to cross the threshold. On the other side is home. Being plant-based isn't about personal purity. It's not about moral superiority. It's about making a conscious choice to widen your circle of compassion. It is about recognizing the consequences of our food choices beyond ourselves. By getting our nutrition from plants, we all win. Thank you.